So the DJI Action 6 just got an 8K recording option via new firmware that just came out, if you can find it. But here's the kicker. That's actually not the most exciting feature that just came in this camera in this firmware update. In fact, I would say it's probably the least exciting of the two major features, but I'm gonna explain it to you nonetheless and show you the other feature, which is way more interesting. So the very first thing you know is how to get this firmware update on your camera. As I'm recording this right now, it doesn't automatically show like most DJI firmware updates would show when you connect your camera in the DJI Mimo app. Instead, you need to take two more steps. Don't worry, they take like one second. Uh, what you do is go ahead and update your DJI Mimo app if you haven't done that already. Then in the lower right hand corner, tap the profile option, then tap the about option, and then tap check for firmware updates. Again, normally this shows you at the top automatically in the app, but for whatever reason, it's not doing that. Once you do that, you'll see a little note saying there's a firmware update available. You can go back to the main screen and then update your camera like normal. It takes just a couple minutes, pretty straightforward. That then unlocks two core new features and a bunch of little features we'll talk about later on. The very first new feature is this 8K recording option that you see right here. I'm just gonna walk you through real quick the options on the screen so you can see what your different mode configurations are. Okay, so walking through some of these options really quick, if I swipe up, I will now see that 8K option. This is where I would previously have my other resolutions right there. The nice part is I can rotate this without any problems and still have the 8K option there. If I go to the right and tap this menu option, there are a couple things that are not available here. Uh, number one, the film tone is not available. So if I go back into 4K something, doesn't really matter. Go over here, I see I have film tone as well as quality priority. Those are both missing in the 8K mode. But going back into 8K, you'll see the other ones that I actually care about are still there. So if I tap into Pro Mode, I have the normal 10-bit log is available, as well as, uh, sorry, 10-bit, as well as D-log 10-bit. Both of those are available without any issues. So again, in 8K, no problem recording in either of those. Likewise, if I go down into my settings here, I can still shoot at the high bit rate, uh, even outside of Pro Mode and back standard or high without any problems. When it comes to the file sizes, uh, in 10-bit mode there, with the high bitrate option, I'm seeing roughly one gigabyte per one minute of footage. It's a very simple math. Obviously your exact file sizes will depend on what you're shooting and how the codecs work and whatnot, but a simple rule of thumb for this would be one minute is one gig. Likewise, I haven't tried any overheating type scenarios to see how that works, so just keep that in mind. The real question then is, what about the actual quality of the footage? Because even when Insta360 added their 8K mode to their cameras, they themselves admit it was largely a marketing exercise, not something you would typically use in a sports-like scenario. So with that in mind, I just wanna throw all these cameras at something so you can kind of compare the image at different zoom levels, because that's ultimately the main reason why you would shoot in 8K or any high resolution, is to be able to crop into that later on in post-production, at least from an action camera standpoint. Now, we're starting off with no cropping whatsoever, so the native image on all three those cameras. Uh, you can see they're relatively similar. I will point out that DJI's color science here, as always, is not awesome. This is definitely not as green as it looks, not as vivid as it looks in real life. The other two are much similar to reality. As we crop into 200%, so 2x there, uh, you can see things are still relatively similar between those cameras. Uh, going up into 400% or 4x right there, that's where you start to see some of those differences. I think actually the Ace Pro 2 looks better uh, at this cropping than the DJI Action uh, 6 does. This is where you start to see some of the fuzziness of the GoPro here as you get deeper into that resolution. But again, from a color standpoint, this is the correct color of that cactus in real life. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, as we go to 800% or 8X here, this is where you can see the GoPro is much, much fuzzier than the other two. Uh, I think the Insta360 one looks better here than DJI. The DJI tones don't quite seem right in this particular scenario. Now, to look at one more secondary uh, shot here, this is of a, a plant, another plant, uh, because they don't move. It makes it really easy to do comparisons. Uh, that green on the Action 6 is just way too deep. It does not look anything like that in real life. It looks exactly like the GoPro in the Ace Pro 2 do. As we go into 400% here on these water droplets. I think actually the Action 6 does the best job of making this look nice uh, from a droplet standpoint uh, compared to the Ace Pro 2, but I think also the color looks nicer, but it's not real, right? And I think finally at 8X in this particular scenario, actually the Action 6 looks the sharpest of that droplet there, um, but again, the colors are off. The other two are the correct colors, roughly speaking, compared to that much deeper shade that you see there. 
Now, before we get into the most important new feature here, just a quick note, I've been doing tons of comparisons of these cameras across actual sporting scenarios, as opposed to just taking pictures of plants. Not in AK, of course, but all these other modes to see how well they compare. That's coming up really soon, talking about the features on these cameras and what you might want to know if you're buying one. And now, let's get to the most important new feature here, which is the ability to go ahead and synchronize your files from the Action 6 up to a NAS device or to OneDrive as well as Google Drive. Uh, so super cool new feature. Let me just kind of walk you through how this works, starting off on the NAS side, so that can be totally owned by you. You don't have to pay a subscription anywhere else. And then on the Google Drive side. Uh, so the very first thing you do is go into the settings there, and you will see a new option for Camera Cloud Service. That is where you will tap which one you want, in this case, the NAS option. And then from there, you're just going to simply add the fields in there that are pretty self-explanatory. So your SMB is just the IP address or the NAS name, uh, NAS device name. And then your mount point name, that's the file share name. If you're like on a Synology NAS, like I I am, you can create a new file share, which is what I did. In fact, I not only created a new file share for this, I also created a new account. So in case for some magical reason, DJI manages to get the username and password of this account, it is a throwaway account that only has access to this one particular share to upload the action camera footage. After that, it's gonna ask for your Wi-Fi network name, you gotta to connect to Wi-Fi and upload to uh, this particular folder. At the very bottom, there's the auto backup option. I'm not sure why you wouldn't select this. They should just select this by default. But in any case, uh, what this basically means is what you would want, which is when you plug the camera in, it automatically backs up a camera to that particular device. So with all that set, I plugged my camera in and off it went. Again, it does require power to be plugged in in order to upload the same as a GoPro or Insta360 camera. When I was uploading to my NAS device on the same Wi-Fi network, it was averaging about 30 megabytes per second, which is plenty fast. Uh, and it went back and uploaded all my previous footage on the camera. I actually just dumped a bunch of footage back to the camera that I had taken off the camera just to see how well this worked. Works super Super duper well. In terms of the folder structure itself, on my NAS device, and this is mirrored the exact same for the way it works on OneDrive as well as Google Drive in just a moment, basically it creates a folder name called DJI device, and then below that it creates one called the device name itself. So the name of your camera, like you'll see that within the settings and stuff like that, that's that folder. And then below that it creates a folder for every single day of your footage. So even if you uploaded today, it would create the folders for those past days like you see right there. I don't mind that, but I also wish it just gave me an option for a flat folder structure, just like put it all in one place so I can easily just move around as I see fit myself. So this is super cool. And this all worked on the very first try for me. Like I was expecting some fiddling here, uh, especially with that for creating the shares and everything like that, but it worked spot on the very first time. Now, if you have Google Drive or OneDrive, it's worthwhile noting you only have one of these three types connected at any one point in time. So I had to disconnect my NAS connection and go back to the settings there and then add in the Google Drive option. From there, it's gonna do an OAuth connection. So that means that DJI does not have your password in any way, shape or form. They did this like the proper way, if you will. Um, so you basically authenticate with Google, I even ask another one of my Google uh, apps to go ahead and validate that I'm the one that's doing this. So two-factor authentication there, all that was great. And at the end of it, it simply tells you which folder it's gonna go to, just like before. So it goes into that DJI device folder, within that, your camera name, and within that, the exact day that you created that footage. So again, identical to the NAS side. The only difference here is it's a bit slower, about one third is slow. So it was averaging roughly 10 to 12 megabytes a second uh, up Uploading my Wi-Fi connection and whatnot to the internet is way, way faster than that. But that's a speed that we're getting up to Google Drive. Perhaps OneDrive would be faster, I don't really know. I do wish there was a Dropbox option here. That's what I primarily use between those three platforms, though I do have all of them. Uh, so hopefully that'll come at some point down the road. I note that in that little like file picker thing there, there's a lot of empty space at the bottom. So maybe that could happen there. Either way, that NAS upload is awesome. I am really hoping we see DJI quickly roll this across all their devices, especially their drones. Uh, their Mavic series, like the Mavic 4 would be awesome. The uh, Neo would be awesome. Like there's no reason not to. You just plug the thing in and off uploads. Uh, there's no like dependency on increasing more file sizes for DJI here. This just does it. That would be incredible. In the same way that GoPro does it already today and Insta360 does it for some of their new devices as well. The difference though is that I don't have to go to GoPro's cloud service or into 360's cloud service, I can use my own devices, which is something I've been asking GoPro for for years to let me just upload to my own NAS device or my own existing Dropbox shares or whatever those are. So hopefully this will be the kick in the butt to make that happen because 
This is super cool. Now beyond that, they've added a bunch of little small things. I'll put a screenshot right here. They're all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, nice little touches to see. So nice little Christmas present overall from DJI to Action 6 users. Though I'd love to see that NAS thing also going back to Action 5 users as well. That would seem like a, a pretty easy thing for them to do. So anyways, a super nice little update for the Action 6. Uh, again, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't. That way you stay tuned for my complete comparison between all the three of these cameras mostly focusing on actual action scenarios as opposed to shooting pictures of pretty cactus. With that, thanks for watching. Have a good one.